slide for Yusha. Yusha is the uh, European Composites Industry Association and is representing both national associations across Europe. In green, you see our members. Uh, we are uh, uh, currently representing nearly 80% of the European market. And we have also sectorial associations like uh, Glass Fiber Europe for glass fibers, SMC, BMC, Alliance, uh, EPTA for pultrusion, and CEFIC for resins. Uh, we are uh, active at the European Commission level and we are supporting decision-making processes to promote uh, innovation in uh, composites. Okay. <laughs> uh, Yusha is uh, taking a, an active role in composite sustainability through its uh, sustainability committee. And the, here are the two key topics that we are currently developing. One uh, is uh, to promote the use of our eco-calculator tool, which was published for the first time eight years ago and allows you to make uh, uh, LCA analysis of composite materials. Uh, limited to the cradle to gate uh, uh, part, we will discuss that uh, at the later stage. But obviously, composite circularity has become a key subject in uh, uh, the, the next year, in the, in the, in the last years, and uh, this will also be briefly examined. What is uh, the eco calculator? It is a uh, free uh, online tool that calculates the LCA footprint of composite part. Uh, uses peer-review uh, industry-based data uh, uh, for the European market. Uh, in some cases, we have been using proxies for some missing materials and has also modeled some materials and processes based on principle of real industrial practice. Why was the tool developed? Uh, there is a competing uh, uh, an increasingly uh, competition between materials, uh, like uh, with metals, concrete, that already have models that are used by OEMs. Uh, there is a growing need for selected customers to uh, answer the question, what is the environmental impact of your product? And uh, we want to keep composites uh, competitive in the long term. Uh, and uh, to be able to demonstrate that they have a, a good life cycle performance overall. And uh, we have uh, been providing uh, the companies and the market with a tool with a transparent and uniform sector methodology following uh, ISO 14040. And it's available to everyone for free. We are using uh, two uh, data sets for this tool. One is the, open, the life cycle inventory the LCI is a collection and quantification of inputs and outputs for a process or material. And we are using also the life cycle assessment, LCA, which is a scientific method for estimating the environmental footprint of the material. The analysis that we are doing is a cradle-to-gate analysis, so starting from the raw materials uh, up to the production of the final parts. So we are not including at the moment the use phase, and the end of life phase of the life cycle of, uh, of a composite part. Uh, this is a, a picture representing uh, to the left a typical LCA, LCI sorry, uh, scheme. So we start from the inventory of substances on the left, and the different chemicals that are involved in the process of producing uh, uh, the raw materials or the part. We associate them to the environmental effects at the center in orange, and then uh, we come out from the analysis with the uh, uh, protection areas that are the health of humans, the protection of the ecosystem, and the uh, uh, use, the depletion of resources. Uh, to the right, you see a, a, a linear scheme that uh, goes from production, use, and end of life. It's not yet circular, but it's used here to uh, uh, clarify that uh, the analysis that we perform with Eco Calculator is only the first part. The orange uh, uh, label, cradle to gate, includes the raw material production, the transportation, and the manufacturing of the part without taking into consideration the assembly and uh, the use and the end of life phases. These are the main features. I will uh, let you read uh, them on your own because this file will be distributed. We are a bit, a bit short of time, so I will skip that part. There is a full list of features, and you can find the tool for free on uh, our uh, website. So you can go there and uh, do and run your own, your own analysis in uh, 
a few minutes. Uh, these are the system boundaries, so uh, we take into consideration fibers, resins, fillers, core materials, coatings, additives, and auxiliaries. Then uh, all those materials are combined together in the production process, which, is, uh, uh, which uh, obviously implies that you have water and energy consumption on one side and emissions and waste on the other side, and then you mold the composite part. And these are the boundaries of our analysis. These are some selected processes that we have in the model on the left, and uh, some of them are still missing uh, that are listed uh, uh, to the right. So we have pultrusion, resin infusion, resin transfer molding, SMC processing and um, uh, molding and compounding, thermoplastic compounding, injection molding, and long fiber technology for unidirectional tapes into the uh, tool. What is missing is uh, hand lamination, spray up, uh, autoclaving and the centrifugal casting, unfortunately. But uh, we are working uh, to update uh, those uh, uh, processes in the near future. Example of data uh, of LCI that we have uh, inside the tool, the inventories are available for generic unsaturated polyester resins, for glass fibers, and for a, a set of thermoplastic resins and epoxy resin. So we are covering most of the resins and the fibers that are into the market. Uh, some other processes had to be modeled. So we have a model for a industrial grade carbon fiber using literature data into the tool. And uh, we have been doing some uh, modeling of the conversion of thermoplastics, typically injection molding, uh, for, uh, to account for, and the extrusion to account for some processes. Obviously, contribution from the industry is always welcome, so we are, able, uh, we are uh, more than happy to expand this uh, range of materials and processes further in the future with the support of the industry. These are some figures. We have currently uh, nearly 2,500 2, users. And uh, into the database, we have more than 5,000 products that have been uh, studied with the tool. And uh, most of the users, uh, oh, sorry, most of, uh, of the users comes from company, 45%. And we have another 38% from university and research center. So it's a very uh, wide audience that uh, we are reaching out. How it works in practice, very quickly. Uh, you uh, get to the homepage of the Eco Calculator through the homepage of uh, the USHA Association, and you will have to register. Uh, re registering is for free, and you will receive an email for confirming the registration, after which you will uh, be able to work. So it's a one minute process uh, that you have to uh, 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 undergo. Then uh, this is the second screen in which you will uh, uh, click on the orange button to the right to create a new eco-report. Then you will have to define the name of your product and the mass of your product. So let's assume that you want to model a, a boat hull uh, weighting uh, 200 kilograms. You will put this information on the first uh, two uh, fields in this form, and then you will press Next. Then you, you will have to choose the conversion process among all the processes that were listed in the, uh, in the previous uh, list. So let's assume that you use uh, infusion to produce the boat hull. You will select infusion, but you can also uh, choose to use your own process. Obviously, you will have to insert one by one all LCI data related to your own process. So it's a lengthy procedure. Uh, uh, I will skip that part, obviously. So let's assume that we use uh, resin infusion to produce the boat hull. And then you will have to insert your recipe. The recipe is uh, how many fibers, how much resin do you use to produce the part, is there any core, any sandwich uh, part in your structure, and so on and so on. And you add, uh, you add one by one those uh, uh, different materials by specifying the weight, the mass, of each component. So let's assume that it's 200 kilograms and is made of uh, 120 kilograms of glass fibers and 80 kilograms of resin to simplify the example. That's it. 
your analysis is done. So it takes really a few minutes to uh, complete uh, this, uh, uh, to fill this information into the system, and the system will create the eco report. There are a few options to export the results. One is to uh, create uh, a PDF with your eco report, which is by far the most frequent, frequently used option. But you can also export the data to CIMA Pro, uh, which was mentioned by Doug uh, previously, uh, which is a very popular tool for make LCA analysis. And uh, you can continue for the use phase and if required also for the end of life phase is in order to complete the LCA analysis of your product or your application. The eco report will look like this. It's a two page. Uh, there, are some, uh, there is some information on the first page. Then you have the pie, which uh, uh, divides the carbon footprint and the cumulative energy demand uh, uh, associated to the raw materials in blue and uh, uh, the same parameters, uh, the, the carbon footprint associated with the production process. And you see that in this case, which was uh, related to a glass fiber application, uh, there is uh, most of the environmental footprint comes from the raw materials. And that's true in general because the impact of conversion processes for composites is very little, if any. But you have also the list of all the other uh, LCA indicators like the ozone, uh, the ozone creation, the climate change, uh, the water consumption, and so on, and so on. So it's a full list of LCA parameters. F a few examples. Uh, we have been analyzing this. Uh, so uh, the ladder rail produced by poltrusion, the material recipe is there uh, for a total of one kilogram. And then you have the cumulative energy demand for the production of this part, 45 megajoules, megajoules per kilogram and uh, the carbon footprint, which is 2.4 kilograms of CO2 equivalent. Straight from the tool, so you don't have to do anything. You press the button and you get those numbers. We did the same for a door panel produced in SMC. Uh, I will go quick on this part. Uh, and then on a car spoiler produced by RTM with using carbon fibers. And obviously you see that the cumulative energy demand, both the cumulative energy demand and the carbon footprint, when you use carbon fibers, increases significantly compared to uh, the case in which you use uh, glass fibers. And there are good reasons for that. And then finally, this is a very complex uh, part, a manifold uh, for a car produced by injection molding. And then you can compare your results. So these are, uh, the, this is the comparison for both the cumulative energy demand to the left and the carbon footprint to the right of our four products. And the different colors in each column are associated to the raw material, blue and uh, dark green, and to the conversion process, orange and light green. And you see that in any case, m most of the environmental impact comes, again, from the raw materials. What are the next steps? Uh, we need to complete the data set uh, for epoxy crosslinkers and some conversion processes. Uh, the uh, data for natural fibers are under development, namely flax. Uh, we are following closely the EU initiative of uh, PEFCR, Product Environmental Footprint Category Rules, and uh, we are uh, wondering if the eco-calculator is compliant or not. Uh, we hope that will be. And uh, we want to include the recycling phase, so the end of use phase in the near future. Uh, but for that, we will need uh, some funding. And uh, we hope that that will come from Horizon Europe project goals. That uh, closes the first part, the eco-calculator. I just want to use five more minutes, if uh, the chairman allows me, uh, to, uh, uh, to explain what uh, are uh, the um, next uh, steps in this direction. We want to demonstrate that composites are of great value, uh, not only for uh, performances, but also for the environment. We want to ensure that composites are truly circular, and uh, we are working with composites industry, OEMs, and partners. And uh, we want to be able to demonstrate to the European Commission that uh, composites are circular uh, to set basis for relevant legislation.
And for so, we are in the need of a roadmap, and this roadmap has been, re has been recently uh, uh, prepared by our sustainability committee, and you see the names of the participants on the, uh, on the uh, blue box uh, on the right top. So, definitely, today, composite circularity is a key subject, as uh, Doug was uh, very well explaining for some wood application that's valid for all materials, including traditional composites. Uh, we have several uh, different options for composite recycling can, that go from co-processing into cement kilns, into mechanical uh, grinding, thermal decomposition of the resin. Uh, there are several processes or chemical decomposition of the resin to, re to recover the fibers. Uh, which is called solvolysis. So definitely, there are many, many options for the recycling, and you, you will have to choose from those options depending on your needs. I will skip the circularity definition, obviously. Uh, uh, today, a proven glass reinforced composite recycling uh, uh, route is the co-processing in the cement kilns. Uh, is a combination of uh, energy recovery, uh, which uh, you get from the burning of the resin, and material recovery, because the composition of glass fiber is fully compliant with the composition of the cement. So the solid part, the fiber goes into the cement composition, and the uh, resin burns out. And you have too many advantages in this process. One, you reduce the fuel consumption, thanks to the combustion of the resin on the cement kiln. And the second one, you reduce significantly the CO2 emissions. Uh, we estimated uh, nearly 20% less CO2 emissions due to the fact that you are using decarbonized materials instead of using minerals like calcium carbonate. You, you use the calcium oxide which is inside the fiber and therefore you save one molecule of CO2 for one molecule of calcium oxide in the production of the cement. A position paper has been prepared that is available to explain all those advantages in cooperation with SEM Bureau, which is the European Association of the Cement Manufacturers. And uh, we are using it uh, uh, to uh, discuss with the Commission about uh, the um, circularity of composites. It's a very highly energy efficient and uh, uh, carbon compliant uh, type of uh, reuse. This is a uh, scheme of the cement kiln, so we are feeding the uh, waste, the composite waste, right at the beginning of the preheater, uh, and uh, we are using it uh, to produce a clinker. These are uh, some examples of some uh, wind blades which are cut in sections, they are uh, ground uh, up to a, a certain size, uh, which is uh, close to the size of a powder, and then they are fed into the cement kiln uh, for the production without any uh, problem. And this is a, a slide which explains why this makes sense. Again, I will skip this, but this will be available for you if you want to know more details about the composition of the glass fibers compared to the composition of the cement. So, uh, well, that's the scheme that we are proposing now. Today, practices are landfill, as uh, Kerem uh, very uh, clearly recalled at the beginning of this section. If uh, it's not landfill, it is incinerated. We want to come back uh, along this cascade diagram, and uh, we want uh, to foster the uh, reuse of raw materials in other applications. And in the next future, that will be the green box at the top. Uh, we want uh, to uh, make uh, composites for composites, so use recycled composites to produce new composites, and uh, we want to maximize uh, the use and the reuse of composites part. This will be possible because composite materials are very durable, are very stable in the environment, so normally the end of life of the material is much longer than the end of life of the application, so even when the material is not suitable, for a given application anymore, it is still a very good material which can be used and reused many times. What are the barriers? Well, uh, additional solutions are needed. So uh, beyond technology, which is developing very rapidly, 
uh, we want we have to develop a market for uh, the recycled materials. We want uh, to uh, study together with the Commission schemes for collection, sorting, and standardization of the products. Uh, there are problems with waste codes and other rulings and laws across Europe that prevent a free cross-border circulation of composite waste. And this is another very serious barrier in Europe for uh, the recycling of materials, not only composites, all materials, plastics, uh, glass, uh, and so on and so on. And we want uh, to expand uh, end-of-life processing facilities over Europe because most of the environmental impact of recycling comes from transportation. So if you start going back and forth across Europe to find a place to recycle your material, you are probably losing most of the advantages of recycling it. We just uh, concluded, and these uh, are the two last slides, Chairman, uh, thank you for your patience. Uh, we just concluded a very interesting uh, work uh, together with the CSR Europe, which is a consultancy company for environmental studies, Leonardo, which is the Italian uh, aerospace industry, and some other partners uh, to produce a blueprint uh, which uh, will be released uh, ele uh, October 11, so next week, Tuesday next week, uh, uh, after uh, at 11, PM, at, at 1 p.m., sorry, uh, which uh, uh, is a, 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 a dossier on composite materials, a hidden opportunity for the circular economy. I'm not uh, able to disclose the contents of this report, but I want to draw your attention on the map at the top. This is a map in which, in color, you find uh, countries around the world that uh, in which there is some legislation concerning the protection of the environment undergoing or in preparation. So this is really a worldwide uh, problem and uh, we have to address uh, it. So we have to take control of our own destiny as an industry. We need a full commitment uh, to address this issue. We should seek and support commercial, commercially and environmentally viable circular end-of-life solutions for composite waste. The cement kiln uh, route is now a cornerstone for our short, short and medium term uh, circularity, but it will remain also in the long term. So we are investing a lot in the collaboration uh, with SEM Bureau to make it possible in Europe. And uh, a joint approach is needed, uh, uh, so we are looking at building a European platform in which all stakeholders can work together to develop circularity of uh, our materials across Europe. I thank you for your attention and uh, I'm open for question. Thank you very much. You said some countries are working on regulations. Authorities have great responsibility on that. Sure, sure. It is to be very effective, but it should not destroy the industry. Yeah. And the UCR is very, has a big, big responsibility in that. Uh, this, uh, this is, uh, in, in our opinion, is the bottleneck of this, uh, of this flow, because from a technical point of view, uh, we are ready or will be ready in the near future, but still there are barriers for uh, the circulation of... Uh, uh, waste uh, around Europe which has to be addressed and this is uh, not an easy topic because uh, it's uh, a matter for the Commission but it's also something that has to be done at the national, at the single country level. As you may know Europe is not a single country. We have many countries, many languages, many cultures, different traditions so that's really at, at the moment the bottleneck of this, uh, of this uh, process but what is sure is that we have to, to move in that direction. Yeah. And you also talked about uh, cement clean. Uh, cement clean. Yeah. The crushing part is the main, uh, the most important part in this process, I think. Sure, sure. Because you are, when you are talking about a wind plate, sure. there's uh, different sections. And, uh, yeah, yeah. It takes time, it takes effort. Uh, it's not so much energy uh, uh, demanding. So it's all mechanical processing and mechanical processing has a low energy demand. So it's not a big impact on the environmental footprint of the recycling process, but it takes time and it takes uh, a, a supply chain uh, which has to be built. Uh, so this is another point, the logistic. 
yes. of uh, the preparation of the material for recycling is the second big topic that yeah. uh, has to be addressed. New companies are coming out, like Continuum Foreign or... Sorry? New com uh, companies, startup companies are coming out. Oh, sure, sure, like sure. Continuum, maybe. Sure, sure. Continuum is a very interesting uh, uh, example of uh, what uh, innovation and research in recycling can do. And we are monitoring uh, them very closely and we are cooperating with them uh, in, in many sense. So Continuum is definitely one of the most interesting initiatives that uh, are popping up everywhere in Europe yeah. at the moment. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, do we have any questions? Thank <music> you.